Good day, students! I miss Angela S. Adesor, one of the science teacher at San Juan City Science High School. Today, we will have our new lesson. But before we start our new lesson or discussion for today, what can you see or observe in my background? Correct! You can see different colors of light. What are the colors of light that you can see? That's right! The colors of light that you can see are blue, green, and red colors of light. So what do you think will be our topic for today? Today, we will discuss about visible light. For our experiment are three flashlights, red, green, and blue cellophane, and tape. What I'm going to do is to cover the head of each flashlight with the red, green, and blue cellophane. We will try our experiment in a dark room. I'm going to point the flashlight directly at white wall. What colors do you see? So we can see color red, green, and blue colors. Next, I will point the two flashlight with two different color of cellophane and let the circles of light overlap the first colored light on the wall. Now, what can you see? Blue and green produce cyan. Red and blue produce magenta. Red and green produce yellow. We can see white light at the middle of three colors of light. Light results from the vibration of energy. The primary colors from our experiment are red, green, and blue. When the three colors are added together, white light is formed. As you observe, secondary Colors are also produced by mixing primary colors in pair. For the next experiment, the materials needed are match, candle, three old CDs, clothes drying clips, and tape. First, I'm going to stand the three CDs on the top of the table. I'm going to use the cloth drying clips in order for the CDs to stand. Next is to align the three CDs in a straight line. Third, I will place the candle at one end of the table and lit it. I need to make sure that the tip of the candle and hose of CDs are at the same level. Observe the flame of the candle from the hose of CDs and you are able to see the flame right now. Now, what I'm going to do, I will move slowly the middle CD going to the left. What did you observe? Are you still able to see the flame? Why are you not able to see the flame? Because the light was blocked by the middle CD. One of light characteristics properties is that in a transparent medium such as air, still water, and also glass, it travels in a straight line. You have learned how light travels. That light that we can see is what you call visible light. But before we start our discussion about visible light, let us define first electromagnetic spectrum and what are the types of electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic spectrum is a range of all types of electromagnetic radiation. Well, if we say electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic radiation is an energy that transmitted at the speed of light oscillating electric and magnetic field. So, if we say electromagnetic spectrum, it describes all kinds of light including the light that we cannot see. In fact, most of the light in the universe is invisible to our eyes. 
electromagnetic spectrum comprise variety types of electromagnetic waves. Each of them has different wavelengths and frequency, but propagate with common speed of 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second in vacuum. So that 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second is equivalent to 300 million meter per second. If you could travel at the speed of light, you could go around the Earth 7.5 times in one second. Einstein's theory is that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. But what is the difference between wavelength and frequency? If we say wavelength, it is a distance between one wave crest to the next. The highest part of the wave is called as crest. The lowest part is the drop. Well, if we say frequency, frequency is the number of waves that passes a given point per second. If the wavelength is long, you will experience less waves. But if the wavelength is short or close together, you will experience more waves. So therefore, the longer the wavelengths, the lower the frequencies. And the shorter the wavelengths, the higher the frequencies. And a higher frequency wave has more energy than a lower frequency wave. The seven types of electromagnetic waves are radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet waves, x-ray, and last, we have what we call the gamma rays. So first, we have what we call the radio waves. If you say radio waves, radio waves have the longest wavelength, therefore, they have the shortest or lowest frequency. Radio waves are best known in communication and technology such as television, we also have the radios, and also the mobile phones. Next to radio waves, we also have what we call the microwaves. We all know that microwaves uses in microwave oven, but aside from that, it is also used in communication and also in radar. Infrared is used in your TV remote to change channels. It can be also used as heat sensor and also for laser metal cutting. After the infrared, we have what we call the visible light. Visible light help us or help human to see the world. And also, visible light is the light that we can see. It is made up of individual colors of the rainbow and it is just a very small portion of electromagnetic spectrum. Next, we have what we call the ultraviolet rays. Ultraviolet rays from the sun are used by our skin to make vitamin D. Aside from that, we also have what we call the UV lights. UV lights is used to kill bacteria and also can be used in sterilizing products. The second to the last in the electromagnetic waves is what we call the X-ray. X-ray can be used to check fractures, especially in the bones, and it can be also used in detecting metals in our body. Last to the electromagnetic waves is what we call the gamma rays. The gamma rays is a type of electromagnetic waves that can damage the cell, but it has a variety of uses. Like killing bacteria, it can also kill the cancer cell and it can be also used to examine luggage and also cargo. So gamma rays have the highest frequency and shortest wavelength. So if the gamma rays have the highest frequency, it will release more energy. Now you already have the idea about electromagnetic spectrum. So let's have a deeper understanding about visible light. If you see visible light, it is just a very small segment or portion of electromagnetic spectrum that the human eye can view or can see. When light hits an object, certain wavelengths are reflected and others are absorbed. The reflected wavelengths are the ones that we can see and they enable us to determine the color of an object. Reflection means is that the light are thrown back from the surface while absorption means is that the light 
are incorporated by a surface and transform into heat energy. Dark objects absorb more heat than lighter or white objects. That is also the reason that's why it feels hotter wearing darker clothes than wearing lighter or white clothes. Incandescent, fluorescent, so zombie for neon and also tungsten halogen light bulbs are types of lighting that produces visible light. White light contains all the colors of the visible spectrum such as red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and also violet. Red has the longest wavelength while violet has the shortest wavelength. When all waves are all together, they make white light. Sun and stars are examples of white light. For artificial, we have the fluorescent light bulbs and LEDs or also known as light emitting diodes. Other light bulbs like incandescent lamp do not produce white light. When light strikes the red petal, it reflects mostly red wavelengths and absorb the other wavelengths. You see petals as red because red wavelength bounce off them and enter to your eyes. While leaves reflect mostly green wavelengths and absorb the other colors. How about what happened to the white and black objects? This is what happened. For example, we have a panda. All colors are reflected when we see the white part of a panda's body, while all colors are absorbed when we see the black part of a panda's body. If you are in a dark room, colored and white objects can appear black because if there is no light present, then no light can be reflected of the things found in the room. No light enters your eyes, so you see nothing. Objects can also appear to have a different color depending on the color of the light in which they are seen. For example, when green light shines on an object, the objects either reflect or absorb the green light. Again, the primary colors of light are red, blue, and green. But in a pigment, the primary colors are yellow, cyan, and magenta. So what is a pigment? If we say pigments, pigments are chemicals that absorb selective wavelengths. And they prevent certain wavelengths of light from being transmitted or reflected. Take note, mixing of pigments are not the same as mixing of colors of light. When pigments are combined, fewer colors are reflected and more are absorbed. If you want to produce a darker shade, one need to add more pigment to the mixture. You will get black if you want to combine all three primary colors of pigment in equal amounts. And you will get secondary color if you want to combine two primary colors of pigment. Magenta and yellow is equal to red. Cyan and yellow is equal to green. Magenta and cyan is equal to blue. You can produce any other colors if you want to combine pigment in varying amount. The perception of colors has many practical applications. Artists, decorators, physiologists, psychologists, and physicists study color with somewhat different emphasis and terminology. Colors are used through photography, printing, as well as color coordinating of textiles and plastics to keep abreast with fashion trends. That's 14 minutes of our lesson for today about visible light. Goodbye!